stoked for this video today. Got a lot of requests for how to build the muscles. So we are going to dive right in. But first, before we get started, I want you guys to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because what this does is it helps with the YouTube algorithm to get this content out there so more people see it, more people can learn this information, and thus more people will be making the gains. So please do that and then let's get started. So the big question of the hour is I want to build more muscle. How do I build muscle? I'm going to cover three topics with you guys in this video today. Training aspect, the nutrition aspect, and rest, which may seem surprising to some of you guys, but hang in there, we will get to that point. So to get started, we're gonna start talk about our training. In order to make those gains, you need to apply a concept in fitness called progressive overload. Progressive overload is essentially progressively overloading your muscles. I'm not just gonna leave you hanging there. So what you wanna do is you wanna place stress continually on your muscles so they never become complacent or stagnant at that weight. So I'll give you an example to help better demonstrate and explain this. So if you're constantly using 10 pound dumbbells to do a bicep curl, your body's going to adapt and adjust because our bodies are amazing and they're just so smart. They have these kind of adaption mechanisms so it can adjust to that quote stress. However, it's gonna keep you lean and toned. It's just not gonna help build that muscle. In order to actually add size, you're going to have to increase that weight to 15 pounds and still perform that amount of reps to, and that added five pounds is that progression overload that's going to help tell your body, oh, there's a heavier weight here than normal, let me readapt. And by doing that, it's going to build muscle to help prepare for the next time you add stress to it. So eventually, by adding progress progression overload, whether that's every week, every few weeks, you're going to see those results in that training aspect. Progression overload is the number one training way, in my opinion, to get those gains. I always do this in my programs and encourage every single one of my clients to do it and I've never had a failure. You have to apply this concept. The other thing is compound movements. Compound exercises uses multiple muscle groups um, in one movement. This is going to be like squats and deadlifts and chest press and shoulder press. Um, these are great for building a foundational strength and they do help to build your muscles overall and that overall growth in that muscle building that you're looking for. However, they are not designed to really sculpt and define your muscles, right? So if you're doing a squat, you're gonna be learn working and building those leg muscles, your shoulders, your back, but you're not going to be getting a, a shredded bicep, right? So this in combination with the isolation movements such as bicep curl and leg extension, things that are specifically designed for a particular muscle group. These you wanna do in combination with the compound movements for an overall muscle growth. Still sticking with the concept of progression overload as well. Now, personally, the best success I've had as far as training style when building muscle has been compound movements, with isolation exercises. However, when I do the isolation exercises, I'm not just doing five pounds to kind of shred it out. I'm still using that progress progressive overload concept to those smaller isolation movements. So for instance, for my biceps, I try to really make sure that I am loading that bicep to still focus on that particular strength and muscle growth and the tearing of the muscle so that when I'm recovering, that tearing is going to go into an anabolic state, which I'll talk to about in a little bit, and that's going to help grow. So you still need to put that overload onto those smaller muscles, not just on the compound movements. But those two concepts, those compound movements, progression overload, number one in your training to build muscle. Eee! My favorite topic! Big surprise, nutrition and food. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Let's hope this video doesn't go in for 40 minutes because I could literally talk all day. So nutrition and food in order to gain muscle, muscle. 
Got it? You need to eat food. Now, I'm not just going to leave you there. We're obviously going to delve into it a little deeper. And how much food do we eat? How much food we eat is based on a concept called the basal metabolic rate plus our activity factor, which is how much we are working out on a daily, weekly basis. And that's going to equal our total energy expenditure, TEE. -E. This is simply an equation. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug in a whole bunch of stats based on your height and weight and age and all this stuff. And then you're going to also include an activity factor, which I will list right here for you guys, all the different activity factor levels. You can also Google this at any time and this readily available resource. All right. So after you figure out your TEE, -E, that is your basic bottom line of what you need to maintain where you are. So, in order to gain muscle mass, you need to add calories to whatever that number becomes, okay? Once you do that, you're still going to stick to clean and wholesome foods because that's what we do, right? Yes. We're not going to just load up, yay, 600 extra calories, pizza, 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 pizza. No. Remember, when you're adding calories, and when you're trying to build muscle, you can just as easily build fat. And let me tell you, that fat's going to be running. It's going to be like, yes, I want to stick on your body. And your muscle's going to be like, eh, I'm a little hard to get. All right, so you got to be careful with the nutrition because if you just start overloading with those bad, I don't want to say bad foods, but those highly caloric, non-nutritionally dense foods, then that's what's going to pack on the fat pounds and not as much muscle. We're focusing on muscle here, folks. So we need to focus on the primary building blocks of muscle. Can I get an amino acid? Amen. Amino acids or protein, which we all know and love, right? So protein, protein, protein is essential for repairing those muscles after working out, AKA putting stress on them. That's what working out does. People don't really realize that when you're working out, you're breaking down your muscle tissue. It's actually going bye-bye, right? So you need to refuel with the proper food and nutrition to build those babies up. So protein is so, so crucial. In saying about protein, we have something called a metabolic window, which studies have shown that if you get protein, specifically like a really simple, easily digested protein, such as whey protein, I personally use vegan proteins, so I just use my protein powder that I use and mix it with water. You can even mix it with some milk or like some soy milk for that extra carb because it's going to go right to those muscles and the more carbs in those muscles means the more gains, all right? So you want to kind of stick to that within the hour after your workout. The quicker you can get that protein source in, the better. Your body's going to automatically start going boom. That food, that protein and carbs possibly is going to go straight to those muscles where it was torn, where it was like, yo, something's going on. I'm sore and I'm breaking down here. So we get fuel put in our body and it's like, boom, time to fix it. But as a response, because it was like, whatever just happened, I don't want that to happen again. Not only does it fix the repaired muscle, but it adds muscle. And that, my friends, is the muscle building we're looking for. It builds that muscle in the event that we put stress on it again. And it wants to be prepared. Because like I said, our bodies are so freaking smart. Literally. I'm fascinated. It's amazing. Right? So, the more you do that, you're going to be like Popeye. You're going to be like, boop, 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 boop. and then we are so happy. We go to bed. We just say, yes. The beach. The beach is that way. And then you just love flexing. That's like your Friday night activity, right? All right. So, I'm getting off topic. Let's stay, stick with it. We are doing great, all right? I hope you guys are getting a little bit more understanding of how to build muscle here we are in our nutrition zone right now. So before we kind of finish on the nutrition aspect, one other concept that 
is really important to kind of think about is not only is post-workout nutrition with that protein important, but since we're trying to make gains, it wouldn't hurt to have a pre-workout as well. When it comes to pre-workout, I can definitely make this a separate video with a whole bunch of examples of pre-workout foods. However, if you're interested in that, comment below that that would be something you'd be interested in and I will gladly make that video. However, I'm just gonna make this simpler for today. And I'm just gonna let you know that if you eat a little pre-workout beforehand, what that's gonna do, it's gonna give you that fuel you need to push through your workout. So, in other words, your body, if you're going on like, you know, six hours of no food, if you just start lifting, your body's gonna use whatever it has in it already, whether that's stored fat, which would be ideal, or whether that's your muscle, if you're already a lean person, it can break down your muscle just to use it for energy in the meantime because you haven't fed it anything. So if we're trying to make gains here, not fat loss we're focusing on, right? We're focusing on gains. So if we're trying to make gains, fueling beforehand, will, that food will be what's utilized in pushing through the workout. So that not only is it going to be used as that fuel for the workout, but you're also going to be able to push and actually perform better in your workout, which means that if you were normally, for example, if you were normally able to press bench press 50 pounds at six reps, if you ate a pre-workout stock, it might just give you a little bit of energy to push six reps instead of five. And that's going to be all the difference because that's just a little bit more progressive overload on that muscle, if that makes sense. So we're pretty much done with the nutrition topic for this video. Now we're going to move on to the third the third most important, seriously guys, I've been doing this for a long time and I've done a lot of trial and error and this was the most astonishing concept I incorporated into my training. I was mind blown and that my friends is rest. Seriously, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but when I incorporated rest days, I'm like, this is so important guys when I incorporated rest days I saw I swear to God I saw my muscle double overnight I swear like I swear my boyfriend can even vouch for me we were lifting and it was like three weeks into the new program that I designed and then all of a sudden I just was like massive gains I was like what the hell and we were just like what happened nothing changed in our plan and the only thing I could connect was that we added rest days. Now, thinking back in retrospect, I was like, of course that's why. Because, like I just told you guys, we're breaking down our muscle, right? We're breaking down our muscle when we're doing our curls. We're fueling it with the food. However, we also need to give it time to actually repair. All right? So, in other words, we don't want to do biceps Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because we're never going to have a time to repair. So then we're going to rest and it's called anabolic. It's catabolic is when we're working out, it breaks down, and then anabolic, it's building it back up. We need that rest day to make sure that everything's resting, we can, our nutrition is doing its thing, and then we can go back stronger and harder next time. All right, so that said, incorporate rest days. All right, it, I would say once to two times a week. We do not have to work out seven days a week to get results, guys, all right? You can work out five days a week. That's ideally for me. Four to five days, even three days a week for a workout. You can still see progress, especially depends on where you are in your fitness goals. But point of the matter is get rest so your body can actually reap the benefits of the workout. And it can start building that muscle that you're looking for. So to recap real quick, in order to build muscle, we need to, prog we need to apply progressive overload. We need to incorporate compound movements and heavy lifting in our isolated movements, such as the bicep curls and the tricep extensions and things like that. We need to eat food above our total energy expenditure in order to gain mass. We need to have a post-workout protein recovery shake. We need to possibly have a pre-workout for that extra energy. And then lastly, we need to rest so we can reap the benefits. I hope you guys enjoyed this workout and got something from it. Again, 
Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you share this video because I get so many questions about building muscle that seriously, I would love for as many people as possible to get this video, just clarify the misconceptions so you can make gains starting now. We're not trying to wait till next year, yo. We're trying to get gains starting now. So the sooner people know about it, the soon we are gonna be taking over the world with our gains. So I will see you guys in the next video. And thanks for watching.